the eight years of conflict in northeastern Nigeria have greatly weakened the already fragile livelihoods of the people in the region, creating a deep humanitarian crisis. As a result of the Boko Haram insurgency and massive population displacements, the Adamawa, Borno and Yobe states have reached extremely high levels of food insecurity in 2016. More than 4 million people are affected. And according to the RPCA, the Food Crisis Prevention Network in the Sahel and West Africa, this figure is likely to increase if appropriate measures are not taken quickly. At its 32nd annual meeting recently held in Abuja, Nigeria, the network paid particular attention to this crisis, hoping to help mobilize further support from regional organizations and international partners. We have noticed that after the passage of Boko Haram, there was a reconstruction of markets and a reconstruction of numbers of buildings, but Boko Haram still remains in action since we have witnessed two attacks done by young girls wearing dynamites. Luckily, there were no deaf, but only wounded. Then we have noticed that some two or four million four hundred people suffered from malnutrition. But for children who died each day, we can count about 2,500,000 of them. What can we do? We are calling on the international community so that the local authorities, the ECOWAS, the WAIMU, in order to provide food and health care to those in need. In the long term, there is a real project of development, a program that is necessary for... In the medium term, there is a real development project, a program which is needed in order to ensure populations to get out from poverty and manage the water, sanitation and education system. For the children, and I hope that the reconstruction of this area is under the watchful eye of the government of Niger. We are delighted to note that the situation has improved significantly because of the singular determination of this administration to restore peace and order to this region as quickly as possible. May I seize this opportunity, therefore, to express a profound appreciation and gratitude to the international community for coming to our aid in ensuring that Boko Haram insurgency is degraded, degraded and finally defeated. As in northeastern Nigeria, to a lesser degree, several countries in West Africa and the Sahel had to respond to food insecurity in the course of 2016. These interventions are part of national response plans, notably in Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, Senegal and Chad. They aim to improve access to food for vulnerable households, protect and rehabilitate their livelihoods and improve governance by building the capacity of actors. As countries have made efforts to elaborate national response plans so that in addition with their own contribution, they can also get support from partners. But since the last couple of years, finance has been decreasing. The issue of funding and the completion of the AGF process, the Global Alliance for Resilience, four years after its adoption, was at the heart of the discussions at this 32nd annual meeting of the RPCA. The expert group meeting in Abuja called for enhanced stakeholder engagement to improve food security, nutrition, and resilience interventions in the region. How to complete the process in progress. And that is what has always been done because countries are not at the same level, both in terms of startup and in terms of organizations to take charge of the AGIR process. So the region, the partners, the regional coordination will continue to support its countries in order to be able to set up a framework which is a real instrument for organizing the presence of the country, taking responsibility for the situation in terms of resilience.
what to do in practice. In the region and at all the countries level, the actors are called to integrate to come together in a regional consultation through a certain number of axes defined in order to be able to fix for the country and according to particular domestic situation of each country, according to the orientation policy at the regional level, ECOWAS regional agricultural policy, the YMO policy, all these policies framing the objectives and the axes in which we try to organize the AG framework. Effectivement, les objectifs et les axes dans lesquels on essaie d'organiser le cadre AGIR. Pour 2017, for 2017, one of our priority actions is the mobilization of resources. The mobilization of resources is a priority for us, as I've just told you. If we do not succeed, the Alliance Agir will have a taste of an unfinished project. We also have in perspective to accompany the nine other countries that have not completed the country resilience priority setting. But more importantly, we won the Global Alliance as year at the level of the Sahel and West Africa as a unifying framework to address all issues of resilience and to fight more effectively against hunger and malnutrition. Everyone should recognize Agir as a unifying framework. The other highlight of the Abuja meeting was the debate around the central theme, nutrition and social protection. In the region, some 20 million children are affected by chronic malnutrition. According to the RPCA, this weakening of human capital is accompanied by significant economic losses, hampers development and undermines the resilience of populations. In addition, West Africa and the Sahel are experiencing strong population growth, a key factor in urbanization. Its population will have to reach 830 million inhabitants in 2050, a dynamic that has significant impact on food and nutritional security. As many studies have shown, and for us as experience has shown that when in a diet, if quantity and quality is not enough, it will clearly play on growth but also on health. And once health is affected, it will affect the population and with that at the health level, we will be forced to double the healthcare spending. This is also why nutrition issues are a fundamental element since until then, the policies that have been developed have put aside the issue of nutrition. We are always talking about food security, but we do not take into account the nutrition issue in terms of nutrients, in terms of nutrition quality, but also in terms of availability, in terms of respecting the diet itself, that is, when to eat, what to eat, and how to complement the right foods to grow healthier. Currently, 40% of the value in the agriculture sector comes precisely from the industrial and commercial value chains, activities downstream of production, and therefore we must invest heavily in this so that the West African countries can export more and more sophisticated agricultural products and also sell on their own market. Rather than exporting and selling tomatoes, let's try to sell tomato juice or ketchup for example. This requires downstream industrial transformations and in order to do this it is necessary not only to encourage private enterprise in the sector but also to reduce the unfair competition of imported products, to invest massively in rural electrification because any agricultural transformation requires electricity. We must also invest in the roads that connect producers to consumers, producers to the market. Here are the two prerequisites that are extremely important. The annual RPCA meeting is traditionally devoted to the agro-pastoral campaign in the Sahel and West Africa. For the 2016-17 season, cereal production is estimated at 66 million tons, and roots and tuber crop production is about 168 million tons, 
both up to 15% from the average for the last five years. These good prospects are due both to a successful preparatory phase and to favorable weather conditions for off-season crops. Et cela nous amène aussi à développer des outils, des stratégies de méthodologie. It also leads us to develop tools, strategies and methodologies in order to use other resources such as irrigation to make sure that rain or no rain, we can still continue to produce and feed the population. Le deuxième enseignement, c'est que si vous regardez aujourd'hui, bon nombre de nos pays mettent près de 10 à 15 percent the second lesson is, if you look at it today, several countries inject 10 to 15 percent of their budget in agriculture. They have exceeded the Maputo forecast, but with the same countries that have exceeded the Maputo forecast, we have found that they are not up to the production level. On such important investment, we must have an important return. We do not feel that about the productivity, which means we need to improve technology, invest in quality seeds, and make existing technologies adaptive to climate change. The technology adaptive to climatic conditions. Due to good production, the level of market supply of agricultural products is considered satisfactory. Transboundary flows of cereals are sharply increasing from 2015. However, due to the security crisis, some areas face difficulties in supplying markets. In addition, grain prices are rising slightly despite good production. Le marché généralement c'est c'est un organe qui fonctionne de lui-même qui se régule. Notamment, il faut on doit avoir des recommandations allant dans les sens. The market is a self-governing body. In particular, we must have recommendations to facilitate flows, facilitate trade, which will allow deficit areas to benefit from production related to benefits, to limit harassment and find means so that the situation will be regulated on its own, encouraging countries to accompany market information systems, following up and responding very quickly to anomalies related to the functioning of the market so as to provide answers to this. The next annual meeting of the RCPA will be held in Cotonou, Benin, in December 2017.